wonderful to be able to be with you, to bring the message that God has laid on my... Oh, hang on a second. Now, I had this on vibrate, so it didn't ring, and of course it vibrated. I got to take this, excuse me. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, well, go ahead and tell me. All right. Seven pound, five ounces, 20 inches. Okay. Everything else? Mom doing the what? Yep. How about dad? Because people don't, I'm a dad, so you have to ask about dad. Fine. Good. Good. I got it. I, I, I've got it. I, because I'm a male, I, I still got it. I'll tell him. Okay, thanks. It's a boy. He's born. Today. Mom's doing fine. Dad's pretty proud because it's his first one. Of course, you know what I'm talking about. Bethlehem was a hillside village in Judea about five miles south of Jerusalem. Rachel's tomb is there. Now that's Jacob's wife, Rachel, mother of Joseph, mother of Benjamin. David was born there, and David was anointed king in Bethlehem. So it has a nice history. Typical village. Rich lived there, poor lived there, they didn't have any middle class. After the birth, the couple waited eight days as prescribed by law and then had the baby circumcised. And then they waited about 40 more days because Mary had a male child and so she was separated from religious ritual for that period of time. If she'd had a daughter, it would have been double that length of time. And then they traveled to Jerusalem and presented their firstborn son in the temple. At that point in time, a name was given. Mary probably kept that name back, didn't tell a lot of people. But she told them in Jerusalem that his name was Jesus. They may have settled back down in Bethlehem before fleeing to Egypt, as we heard in what Sandy read. In Bethlehem, the houses were one or two rooms with dirt floors and clay roofs. And the young men were in charge of putting another thin layer of clay on that roof whenever it started to drip or leak. If it was too bad, they just cut a chunk out and put more clay on. That's why later in Jesus' life, we hear of them cutting a hole in the roof to lower a man down to see Jesus because they were used to cutting the roof apart and then repatching it. The houses were collected around a courtyard, and in that courtyard there were chickens and wood piles and goats and the kitchen. If it was cold, they'd cook inside, but normally they would cook outside, and that was the woman's duty. So yes, there were definitely women in Bethlehem. The men were the breadwinners, the stonemasons, the ironsmiths, the woodworkers that made the carts, made the plows because they were a farming community. Joseph probably joined in with those woodworkers because I can't quite imagine although he would be proud as a new father, spending 48 days 
in the house with a new baby sitting, looking at that baby the way a mother would. And as he worked, he would tell some of his clientele, the ones that he was repairing their tables and repairing their chairs, making handles for their farm implements, he would tell them, as a proud papa would, that he had a son. He had a new son. Now Mary probably didn't get out and go and fetch water, which was a major thing that the women did. They collected water, fresh water each day from the well. They couldn't really use the cistern water that they collected. They used that for washing and cleaning, but they didn't use it for making bread and making stew. So she didn't get a chance to go out. So probably, and this is where the topic of my sermon comes in, imagine the visitors. She probably was able to talk to some of the women in the village as they came to see her newborn son. Because I'm sure the buzz around Jerusalem was about all of the people that buzz around Bethlehem, all of the people that were there for the census count. We're kind of used to that because we've had an influx of people coming into our area, and we talk about it quite a bit. So I'm sure in Bethlehem they did. They talked about the people who were there from other parts of the region who were ordered to be there by the census. And they talked about a few of the women gave birth while they were there. Mary was one. And so some of the town's women and probably some of their daughters came to see the new baby. Just like we do. And a few of the men would come along with their wives to see the new baby and to talk to Joseph. They didn't spend a lot of time talking to Mary. It just wasn't done in those days. But they were anxious also to see a son born to this craftsman, this wood craftsman that was in their area. They were excited because it was a son. The Jews were patrilineal, which means things are traced down through the mail. So to have a son is more important to them because it carries on the name and the line or the lineage. And that would be from King David, which is why Joseph and his espoused wife came back to Bethlehem. That was his home city through the line of David. Men were the spiritual heads of the family. They were also the religious teachers of the family. So as Jesus began to grow, his father would have instructed him until he was old enough to go to the temple to get more formal instruction from the leaders who were there. The family was a cohesive unit. They bonded together. I would imagine they bonded very tightly because they were out of their element. They were in Bethlehem, a different town than they were used to. Joseph may have seen some relatives that he knew. Mary wouldn't probably have seen anyone that she knew because she married into that family and was pulled down to Bethlehem with Joseph. But just think of the joy that some of the people got from seeing that new mother, greeting that new father, holding that new baby, not realizing who that baby was. That's why the song last night, and Sue played it earlier in the prelude as well, 
but Mary, did you know? I'm not sure how much of that she really knew and understood. That that little boy is the great I am. And we have that opportunity today to visit with Jesus and take some of that spirit and spark with us on this most holy day. I'm excited about the music that Sandy and Jane picked. And I'm especially excited about the last song that we will be singing. And if you look ahead, I think you understand why I would be excited at that. And so I let you imagine some of the visitors that will visit Jesus today and through this next year, through your witnessing and telling them about this new birth that should excite all of us like it excited people in Bethlehem just a few years ago. Amen.